Hi, welcome to MediatorPodcast.com, a podcast and video series about mediation, negotiation, and collaboration. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I'm a valuation expert and divorce financial mediator in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we're speaking with Krista Shelton, a certified fraud examiner and former special agent for the IRS. She has her own firm, Focused Forensic Solutions, where she and her team aids clients in uncovering facts, decoding details, and finding resolution during challenging financial crime investigations. Welcome, Krista. How are you? you. I'm great. How are you? But are there steps that like the people could take um, to look at things or collect data or sleuthing around if they su- suspected some of this stuff? Absolutely. I mean, if you've got bank statements at your house that you keep in a file file cabinet, look through those. Make sure that you that you can identify every account that you're finding, whether it be a financial, uh, you know, a, a, a financial institution, a credit card company. Um, you know, any kind of financial document, I would take a look at and make sure you at least write down the account number and who's on it. Um, you know, it may be a matter of accounts that are, uh, you know, in, in the parents' names that are being used by your spouse and things like that. If, if it's a small business and you've got QuickBooks on your home computer, I mean, I, why, and if you have a login, why wouldn't you get on there and download a backup copy of the QuickBooks? Or get on there and, and you can Google, I mean, it's, you know, Google how to run a report in QuickBooks and you'll get step-by-step, um, you know, instructions on that. Mm-hmm. And so there's things that may be at the house that you can identify that you can go ahead and grab just to make sure that you have that information, you know, even if, you know, it's a year from now that you end up getting divorced. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so those are the, those are the, uh, the other thing I would say is like paying attention to the mail that comes in the house. So, you know. Or is all the mail being sent to the business? And is there a reason for that? Are your personal bank statements, if you notice that those are being sent to, you know, your husband's or your spouse's business address, then that would be something that I would identify. Yeah. And the reason why that's a red flag, because people wouldn't understand that, is that most accountants tell business owners to send their business statements to their home. Yes. So that you don't have your staff opening it up and you have a separate, you know, like you can know if somebody's stealing from you. Mm-hmm. So um, one of the other things that I think is interesting is that you could go to your spouse's office and, you know, even looking around at what the the envelopes are coming from Bank of America or Chase or something like that. We have phones. I mean, I would definitely recommend, I mean, writing down things is great, but if you know your spouse well enough, they will destroy documents. And so taking pictures of things that have some, you know, a lot of times they will paint the person to be crazy, you know, so you'll be like, no, I saw this account. Well, if you at least have a picture, it doesn't mean that it's totally admissible, but it has the account number. It has tangible proof that that statement and some of that information you can use, right? 